Hello and welcome to another episode of A Weekly Waypoint where I must once again ask you not to adjust your sets because we are playing a PlayStation 1 game today called Rogue Trip which was a big part of my childhood. Uh, I didn't have Twisted Metal, I had Rogue Trip, but fun fact, this was made by Twisted Metal devs after they sold the Twisted Metal IP. This was kind of the next Twisted Metal, I guess. Um, kind of off-brand Twisted Metal. I've still never played a Twisted Metal. I fully plan on doing so one day, but this is what I grew up with. Now, you might be wondering why the gameplay is so absurdly quiet. That's just for the first of these two matches. It's because I realized the game has copyrighted music in it and I don't want to get dinged. But yeah, I believe I spoke about this a little bit on the weekly waypoint where I played Cell Damage Overdrive on PS4, but um, vehicular combat uh, games were such a big part of my childhood growing up. This was my first ever, I believe. No, I'm pretty damn sure this was my first ever. Uh, I played it to death with my dad and just through like the campaign and stuff. Looking back on it, not sure it's the greatest. You have to control using the analog stick, so it's really hard to control where you're driving. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it is it is what it is. Just want to pause time here real quick to jump in and say I just realised I rebound the D-pad on the PlayStation 1 controller to the analog stick. So actually, you controlled with the D-pad. Okay, sorry. Correction over. Um, but this is what I had. The plot is that it's 2012, the world has been destroyed, and you are supposed to pick up tourists who want to visit these landmarks, uh, and you get, when you go through the, when you when you do the photo ops, you get money. The whole point of picking up tourists and generating money is so that you can spend it on repairs, and I believe weapons, but I've never ever in my whole life figured out how the weapon gates work, because they never seem to give you weapons. You have to eliminate every other player. If you get eliminated, you're out. Now, it's not my favorite vehicular combat game I've ever played. Um, that might go to a game called Motor Mayhem on PS2, which if I ever figure out how to emulate the PS2, you better believe I'm showing you that game. And most of the vehicular combat games I ended up playing were on the PS2, uh, were in the PS2 generation. Um, and as I've said before, I feel like they kind of paved the way for my love of arena shooters, because you can see where a lot of the similarities lie, right? This is one of those games that's a little bit tough to go back to. Um, not just because the soundtrack gets stuck in your head and it's not your kind of music and you hate that, <laughs> but also just because the controls are just so awkward um, and obviously the game looks like butt. Uh, but speaking of butt, yeah, I learned how to jump. Like, I, I, I knew there was a way to jump, I just couldn't remember how. I learned how um, towards like the last quarter of this video you have to hit L1 and R1 at the same time to jump, which is, who designed that honestly? Um, but yeah, one of my favorite things about these levels is there were always secret places to find little destructible areas to break down and, and go into and stuff like that. So yeah, that's Rogue Trip. That's that's the, the game you're watching. But what have I been up to this week? Well, I've been playing a whole bunch of LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, which uh, I'm about to do a blog post mostly about as well, so I guess I'm talking about this game twice today. Obviously, if you know me, you know that I've been incredibly excited about this game in the months up to its release. In the years up to its release, if we're being frank, it got delayed many times. But it wasn't until the first kind of gameplay overview trailer that dropped a few months ago that I realised the scope of this game and how it's not just like they're remaking the complete saga and adding a few more levels onto it. like. It's not just good. Obviously, it's not just going to be like the level based uh, system it was before, which I don't know. I was always kind of iffy about that. I always kind of liked the level based system, but I have more to say on that soon. Obviously, there's still levels in it, but it's a lot more based around uh, open world gameplay as well. And when I saw this in a gameplay overview trailer, as, along with the, like the class system and the upgrade system and, and the refreshed combat and everything like that, I was like, holy shit, this is like a dream come true. So, did it meet up? to those expectations in a very poorly constructed sentence. Yes, it did. At the current time of speaking, I've completed episodes one through six. I'm halfway through episode seven, and the only reason I'm not any further through it is because uh, when I play this game while talking to friends, I like to do open world uh, content instead so that I'm, you know, kind of experiencing the story uh, by myself. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Everyone does that. You might be like, story, this is a fucking Lego game, but it actually does rehash the story pretty well. Obviously it flies through it at a very fast pace because it has to. Uh, there are certain scenes which aren't going to be included. There are certain things which are going to be slightly changed because this game's aimed at like kids and some of the stuff in Star Wars is actually pretty dark. I'm fine with all of that. I didn't come here for a freaking, you know, perfect retelling. I've got Disney Plus, I can just go and watch the movies whenever I want. It's great, it actually does give you a sense of, um, you know, the story a lot better than the originals do. Like, I've mentioned before that LEGO Star Wars was kind of like my first real 
exposure to Star Wars. I think I did see the original trilogy when I was like really young, but like when I was kind of like, I don't know, seven or eight or something, I got Lego Star Wars and that was my first real like, oh, like this is what Star Wars is. And obviously there was no voice acting in that game and people are very contentious about that point too, like do they want mumble mode? Uh, you can unlock that from the start, so quit your engine. I left the voice acting on and I think um, it does a decent job of telling the actual story of Star Wars as well as just being a goofy Lego game. Obviously it's not a replacement for the films at all, not by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm just saying like if you're a seven year old playing it and it's your first experience of Star Wars, it's probably going to be a more cohesive experience than my first experience of Star Wars was. The humour is hit and miss. Uh, so sometimes you're like okay we get it you really liked the scene where Luke drank the blue milkshake you don't have to make him drink blue milkshake at every goddamn opportunity uh, but then other times there's some like Pratt Falls which are pretty fucking funny <laughs> but even that I'm like this game's aimed at kids so like what am I to judge the humor it's just like when you're so familiar with those movies and there's been so many parodies and jokes and memes made about it you'll be surprised at some of the things they don't touch and then you'll be surprised at some of the things that they go all in on because everyone has a different you know perspective of what's funny and what what a joke can be made out of and frankly what's overdone and should not be touched I guess. The actual combat, I wasn't sure if I was going to care about the overhauled combat, turns out I do, I think it's pretty good. It's a bit button mashy, uh, obviously again it's a Lego game, it's not going to change the world, um, but like the lightsaber combos and stuff really do kind of, you know, it's not quite as much of a chore when there's waves of enemies. When this game was about to come out there was a 90 minute preview that was put out of the gameplay and there was a, there was a level where you have to repair the Millennium Falcon and I, I stand by the fact that this is one of the weaker levels in the game um, because a lot of it is just like waiting while stormtroopers assault you and you have to shoot them and all and I remember watching that level and being like huh that, that seems like it's going to be a boring level but actually but when you're the person playing the game obviously you're like oh it's not that bad because the combat's actually pretty fun like I like the over the shoulder shooting uh, I like aiming for stormtrooper helmets and trying to pop the helmets off and getting headshots and stuff like that um, like I've already said I think the lightsaber combat is fine the jewels have cool moments where you have to like mash a button some times and like I don't know like this game's not afraid to be kind of cool even though it's a Lego game at times and then the open world nature of it it's just fucking huge like this game is going to take so long for me to perfect and I am going to try and perfect it but there is so much content I've spent at least two hours in just one of the three areas on Coruscant and I've only got half of the kyber crystals there and that is like one third of like one of I don't know how many locations and planets I think it's like somewhere between 20 and 30 it's absolutely enormous as for the levels they are there um, people you know are a little bit iffy about them because they're a lot shorter than they might expect or some things weren't made into levels that they might have liked to see as levels the one thing I'll say to that is I think it's fine. Um, the original LEGO Star Wars Complete Saga is always there if you want to go back and actually play those levels as you remember them. This is different. Um, but a lot of the open world stuff is in story mode for a reason. You can't change characters because like when you're in the open world you might get to a point where you're assaulted by stormtroopers and you have to like make your way through that section. It's still gameplay. It's not just traversing from one mission to the next. So while it's not like a mission per se, it's not like a level in its own right, it's still like a level kind of gameplay if you know what I mean. And the last thing I'm gonna say about this game is the space combat is surprisingly good as well. Like obviously it's basic, it's simple, but it, it reminds me a lot of No Man's Sky space combat which is also quite simple but I like it for the same reason. So if you have issues with No Man's Sky space combat you'll probably have issues with this game space combat but I think it's delightful. I so far have not got tired of blowing up TIE fighters in space, it's great. So Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, everything I wanted it to be and much much more. <laughs> Extremely happy with it, highly recommend it. Um, it does things that no other Lego game has done but obviously if, if you haven't liked LEGO games in the past, this probably won't change your mind. It is still a LEGO game, All surprisingly. Right, it's just a really good collector fun platformer, what can I say? And for context, I actually think some of the past LEGO games have been hit or miss. Like, I enjoyed LEGO, LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, for instance, but I've had a hard time enjoying LEGO Marvel's Avengers. Like, sometimes it just doesn't feel like it's got the special sauce. This one has the special sauce. This one's special sauce comes with a fancy new recipe and you'll never want to go back to the old special sauce. Anyway, what else have I been playing beyond LEGO Star Wars? Well, a whole bunch of Fortnite. Did I talk about Fortnite last week? I think right, I did. I think I would have, right? Yes, I did, but I barely mentioned it, so I'm going to mention it again. Um, yeah, I've been getting into Fortnite because of the no-building stuff, which really revitalizes the game for me as someone who has always been slightly frustrated when you try and snipe someone and a fucking mansion pops up around them and you know that you'll never have that building ability yourself. This takes all of that out and just makes it more like 
you know what, I kind of want Apex to be, and like, I do enjoy Apex, I've, I've enjoyed it with Reese a lot, uh, but this is more my speed, it's more kind of casual in a way, um, like obviously people play it at like a professional level, so that might be weird to say, but like in my eyes at least, it's easier, <laughs> It's uh, the time to kill is shorter, uh, just shooting people feels better, like the gunplay isn't objectively better, it's a lot simpler, but I like it for being simpler, and I'm just really enjoying working through the battle pass with Reese and Molly. Um, it's, it's just a lot of fun. I've already got a Fortnite shenanigans video on the channel, so you can see the kind of shenanigans we get up to in that game. Um, and it's actually one of my favourite videos I've made in recent times. I think it's really funny, in my opinion. But then I do like to make myself laugh, so you take that with a pinch of salt. Just go watch the video. I'm not going to say that building is something that's actively kept me away from Fortnite all this time. Um, it's probably more the fact that I just fell off playing it after Chapter 1, Season 4 and 5, and then like... The kind of aura that game gives off with like how popular it is with younger people, it really makes you feel like it's not for you, like you're kind of the boomer of a crowd in a way, even though you're only 26. But when you get back into playing that game, that all washes away and you're like, oh no, this is just dumb fun and cheerful and, and just serotonin to be frank. I have spent the V-Bucks I earned during the battle pass on a banana skin of a Roman Emperor as a reference to uh, Gladiator, I'm pretty sure it is. and. Because he, he's got like the thumbs down thing going on in the freaking shop page as well. And I've also actually spent a little bit of extra money on a game to get Ezio Auditore da Florenze because I fucking love that character. He's one of my favourite characters in all the video games. And, you know, I, I want to I wanna play as him in Fortnite. Yeah, you know, I fucking had a decent payday, so why not? With that kind of thing, though, I'm always very, like, cautious. I'm always like, it's, it's a, you know, I don't know if it's really a slippery slope or if it just appeals to certain personalities and I'm safe from being one of those personalities. Uh, but I'm always worried about, like, I don't want to be the kind of person who drops 200 pounds on Fortnite skins, you know? So I'm always very cautious when I do spend extra money in a game like that. I think the battle pass is fine, uh, but when it comes to the shop page, like, I don't want to be like, well, I bought Ezio, I can buy Master Chief now that he's in the store again. Oh, I should buy Batman while he's here, I want to have all of them. Because at the end of the day, there is part of me that remembers, like, 10 years ago, if this was made 10 years ago, it'd be like a PC thing with its own dedicated servers and people would just have those skins modded into the game that you could choose from from a list for free, you know? The only reason they cost money is because Epic sells them for money. But then also you've got to take into account that people spent time and effort actually making the skins and it's a product and, you know, there's two sides of that argument, but <laughs> I'm not going to fall on either one, I'm just saying. I don't want to be a, a whale, basically. But I don't think being a whale is something you can necessarily choose and I've never been a whale, so I'm probably safe. Just you know, just keeping that cautious grip on my wallet. I've also been playing a whole bunch of World of Warcraft still. I basically haven't been playing anything different from last week, let's be real. I finished, uh, I don't remember if I did that this week or last week, but I finished leveling Arrakesh to level 50, so there's going to be a final fourth episode of The Travels of Arrakesh coming out in the coming weeks. And I started a death knight in Northrend, a Lightforge Draenei death knight, no less, called Yulvira. It's spelled with a J. Pronounced pronounced with a Z. I feel like Drain I would pronounce it that way, right? Maybe? Possibly? I'm not sure. But I pronounce it that way, so there you go. I've taken her to Howling Fjord instead of uh, Boring Tundra, and I'm having a great time there learning about, like, I obviously already knew all of this lore, but about the Vrykol and the Curse of Flesh and how humans are descended. Seeing how it's represented in game and seeing how it's, like, given to the player is really interesting, and I'm, it's one of the reasons I'm doing this whole thing, where I take a character and play them through an entire expansion, you know? I'm also getting back into mount collecting, which I haven't really done since the end of Legion, to be perfectly honest. Um, I... I lost my train of thought though. Yeah, ever since they introduced the kind of sets window uh, for the transmog, I've been focusing on collecting transmog and not mounts, but I downloaded an add-on called Rarity, which is obviously a very popular add-on that's been around for a long time. For some reason, I never bothered with it. It's literally just a tooltip on a minimap that when you hover over it shows all of the mounts you've yet to collect from bosses, which drop them and stuff, and um, it shows like the amount of attempts you've done on that boss, and it also shows uh, interestingly, an average chance, because for instance, and I'm no, like, mathematician, so bear with me here, but if, uh, if something's got a 1 in 100 drop rate, it calculates versus how many attempts you've done the new kind of drop rate, so for instance, I've, I've killed Baron Rivendell, like, 26 times, so my drop rate, even though it's still 1% every time, based on the overall amount of times I've killed him, is closer to, like, 20% or something. Now, of course, it doesn't work exactly like that, because I kill him 5 times, and I still don't get the mount, and that's, like, 20% 5 times you're most likely to get them out after five, right? It doesn't work that way, it's averages are fucking weird. The way I feel 
like I've figured out to look at it is it's like a rolling game. Like, out of all of the times I kill him, if I kill him with like a 27% chance of a drop, it's like I've had to roll between 1 and 27 out of 100 to get them out. If you know what I mean. If that makes sense. It's very weird. I don't know. Maybe an actual mathematician in, in uh, the comments can correct me. All I know is Rarity's telling me there's like a 25% chance for me to get a horse on the next drop, and that is not happening. I have to remind myself it's 1 in 100 every time I do it. <laughs> every time I don't get it. But yeah, I'm farming Baron Riven there because he's got the only vanilla mount from a drop that I don't have. Also farmed a bit of Ice Crown Citadel. I'm going to be doing that every week on Grim Slash. I say every week, probably be like two or three weeks until I get bored of doing it again. But the Warrior Transmog set from Ice Crown Citadel is one of the only Transmog sets I actually like the look of from Ice Crown Citadel. So that's why I'm doing it on Grim Slash. Anyway, we're only like, what, like a week and a bit away from the Dragonflight reveals. So I'm excited about that. I talked about the uh, leak last week, of course. I think what I'd like to see most out of that expansion is, I think I already mentioned this last week, the class skins idea pitched by Talius and Nevertel for like Dark Rangers and stuff, uh, but honestly I'll just take a new class at this point as well. <laughs> it's been a while since we had a new class, you know, it'd be fun to play something new, especially since I'm really starting to get to a point in that game where I'm super familiar with every single class. I'm leveling a rogue. Uh, I think I just need like a rogue and a priest now up to like max level. I think I've done a water max level at one point or another after that. I'm just playing the different specs at this point, like I've never had a frost mage until Arrakesh. Right, I need go. to make a fire mage at some point now. Obviously you can swap between them on every mage, but I like to have a character dedicated to each because class fantasy. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next week. Hello and welcome to another episode of A Weekly Waypoint where I must once again ask you not to touch your sets, uh, not to fuck, let me redo that. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another point of a fucking- oh my god, I can't get this right today. Hello and welcome to another episode of A Weekly Waypoint I where I must- oh my god. <laughs> welcome to the end of the video where I've put some bloopers, I guess.